Today we talk about Starship. Welcome back. Here we talk about space and everything related to it. If you are passionate about space, astronomy, technology and everything about it, you can join all our social platform at the Space Info Club or our website at www.spaceinfo.club where tons of content and a community of experts are there waiting for you. This is the Space Info Club. The first test flight of the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built is in the books now. And what a dramatic and nail biting for SpaceX it was. Indeed, uh, I don't know if you have seen the, the live event or some videos of the highlights of the launch, but it was amazing. Well, uh, that day we, there were two goals, two main goals. One uh, was bringing Starship first stage booster, known as uh, the Super Heavy, down for a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico and achieve a controlled re entry of the 165 foot tall. And for the European friends, 50 meters upper stage, which is uh, the Starship itself, and basically it can be called also the ship. But the super heavy booster and the ship appear to make their water landings, sending spectators at the so in the surroundings, uh, well wild. The, the video was amazing. Well, just give uh, just to give uh, some data for the people who don't know Starship or don't have familiarity with the with the ship itself. You can see. Uh, that the overall rocket is something like 400 feet, one, uh, 120 meters about, uh, with a diameter of 9 meters uh, and the payload capacity, capacity for sure not today, not in the flight test, but uh, uh, nominal, uh, in the nominal launches of something like 100-150 tons depending on, uh, on the final orbit uh, and uh, some or orbital parameters. The Starship itself, which is the upper stage of the overall uh, tandem configuration, is uh, 50 meters high uh, with a diameter gain of uh, 9 meters, a propellant capacity of 1,200 tons with a thrust of uh, uh, 1,500 tera... Uh, yeah. And payload capacity again of 100-150 tons. Again, the the super heavy booster is uh, 70 meters high, about 9 meters diameter, with a propellant capacity of 3,400 tons, with uh, equipped with 33 uh, engines at the base, and uh, in the la uh, which are the Raptor engines. A few words in a minute. Uh, during the test, the fourth test flight, uh, 32 on 30 over 33 of them performed nominally, but uh, in the ascending and in the descending phase, where not all of them were activated, but. Uh, and this is a nominal procedure, but the overall uh, landing leg was uh, performed nominally and successfully with uh, a, an amazing landing in the Gulf of Mexico waters. Well, uh, before going on, the Raptor engine, the Raptor, Raptor engine is quite peculiar. It has a diameter of 1.3 meters on, uh, let's say, on the bell shape, but uh, it can vary depending on the configuration uh, if it if it will be uh, designed for Earth atmosphere spheric flight for orbital flight and things like that uh, we have already said these uh, these considerations in other videos uh, let us know if you want to hear again but not today uh, the height of this uh, of this engine is 3.1 meters and the thrust uh, is uh, as you can see um, uh, is uh, something like uh, uh, 500 uh, and 7 uh, kilo pounds force uh, which is basically ama is amazing considering also it is uh, it flies a mixture of uh, methane and liquid oxygen uh, which is a, a new mi a new mix a relatively new mixture uh, designed for uh, Mars flights but back on the on the topic of today we, uh, thanks to to a video to the, uh, which is the, basically the, the highlights of the flight. We can see now the countdown. We are uh, almost in uh, 33 seconds, seconds into the liftoff. Um, you can see the, uh, the gantry and the launch pad. And as I, I, rem I recall that uh, the launch pad and the, the steel structure was uh, redesigned, completely redesigned after the very first flight of the, of the, star the Starship because uh, the 33 uh, booster, the 33 engine of the super heavy booster melted down the structure. Now we are going into the liftoff in uh, six, five seconds. And uh, again, the liftoff, as you, as you will see, 
uh, now the uh, the, the lighting se sequence of the engines uh, you will see now in a few seconds okay uh, it happened now that uh, one of the 33 engines was uh, was uh, simply shut down uh, due to external causes uh, spacex haven't said uh, anything uh, up to the up to now and now the rocket is lifting off into the clouds and uh, with uh, with this amazing and huge flame out into the um, into the sky and this is amazing. Now the rocket is climbing into the upper, st upper, st uh, upper layers of the atmosphere, 30 seconds in the flight. Uh, in a few uh, in a few minutes, all the propellant, uh, almost all the propellant, uh, will end up. And Elon Musk celebrated uh, or uh, also on uh, on X the success the success of the mission with uh, already with uh, a, a tweet saying successful soft landing of the starship super heavy rocket booster uh, because yes spoiler the rocket boost the, the booster landed successfully and in a vertical configuration into the waters of the gulf of mexico and uh, on the starship vehicle meanwhile the, the booster was landing appeared uh, that uh, the landing burn was uh, already uh, was preparing to to happen with uh, the flap uh, suffering a burn through damage during uh, the descent but the camera was uh, uh, was just transmitting amazing images to the people on the ground well uh, despite the loss of many tiles and damaged flap starship made it all the way to a soft landing in the ocean this is the second tweet uh, the, the second ex post on the social uh, again by Elon Musk congratulating to all the SpaceX team as we can see now we are still in the climbing phase if you're watching on the video uh, we are something like uh, 2700 kilometers per hour at 30 kilometers in the atmosphere max Q, max Q point uh, already passed uh, uh, since a few minutes since a few seconds again max Q point uh, is the point where uh, we have uh, the maximum dynamic pressure which is uh, uh, the the product between the square the square of the velocity and also the density of air so the faster you go the fa the higher will be the dynamic pressure but you also have to consider the density of the atmosphere so the higher you go the lower is the density and the lower the dynamic pressure on your vehicle will be so uh, you have to optimize for a specific altitude which you can find by uh, almost simple calculation where you want to uh, to have the the point of maximum dynamic pressure and therefore you will optimize the thrust level for that usually uh, you are optimizing your thrust level to that point uh, in order to have uh, the maximum thrust where it is most required now at this, this phase uh, we have seen the hot staging which is a maneuver as you have seen in the diagram below in the screen uh, the maneuver that uh, starship performs uh, where three of the 33 uh, engines on the booster are still uh, are still basically exerting thrust so they are keeping pushing the overall structure and without stop pushing we have a separation of the starship with the booster this is called hot staging because you don't have a complete shut off of the engine once the the two uh, the two are separated uh, again the middle uh, the middle ring of the engines in the booster reignites and uh, after an amazing flip maneuver uh, the booster uh, basically heads uh, towards Earth and the Starship continues climbing into orbit. We are uh, at an amazing speed of almost 7000 km per hour at an altitude of 107 km now. The combination of uh, liquid oxygen and methane is uh, keeping burning in both uh, the, the spacecraft. Now all the engines of the, of the booster are, have been shut off as you can see now let's uh, let's skip a little uh, into this uh, into this flight as you see uh, the other time there were some problems but uh, under the point of view of the EV of the EV booster because uh, um, some problems occurred with the control uh, of the landing booster which landed uh, let's say uh, at the right coordinate more or less but with some problems in the fast in the last seconds so impacted some some strong in the ground and so uh, the the landing was for sure not acceptable 
this time you will see that uh, things will go a little different uh, the descending leg uh, is continuing now we are uh, 45 kilometers above the ground for the booster 145 kilometers uh, in the atmosphere for the uh, starship uh, traveling at something like 14,000 kilometers per hour and uh, we are seeing now that the uh, the spacecraft uh, the the booster is still uh, going into into the uh, going towards the earth uh, only con uh, with aerodynamic control as you can see now from the images uh, the fins are trying the hypersonic fins uh, are uh, controlling uh, the the booster basically but uh, without uh, the, the deceleration given by the thrust of the engines. Uh, we are now 5 km and 1700 km per hour into the atmosphere. For sure the density of air is quite strong now. We are 2 km above the ground and uh, in a few seconds, basically now, all the, en all the engines, uh, part 1 de uh, deputed to the landing, uh, are just ignited three engines we are decelerating 100 kilometers and uh, in a few seconds we'll just stop in the water perfect vertical configuration we have a complete successful landing after seven minutes and 25 seconds from the launch the booster have landed and after lifting off uh, performing a perfect off stage of the spacecraft and now it is it has landed the crowd is wild basically in the spacex uh, premises now back into the atmosphere in the upper layers of the atmosphere 145 kilometers uh, almost constant altitude the spacecraft is traveling and uh, at 23000 kilometers almost 24000 kilometers per hour and uh, it will land back into the Indian Ocean performing a, a almost perfect landing into, into this ocean and now uh, thanks to this other video again uh, in, uh, by the, the writing on the video views by Starlink uh, we know that all the services by SpaceX were exploited to give uh, the possibility to all the people to assist to the uh, to the video and to the live stream in orbit you can already see that the altitude have decreased we are now at 94 kilometers above the surface traveling at uh, something like 26,700 uh, kilometers per hour in the atmosphere the mission elapsed time is uh, 46 and 40 seconds minutes, minutes and seconds and uh, the flight test is the fourth of the starship again for the people uh, who has uh, just connected now and we have seen, we are seeing now that uh, there is some plasma uh, around the spacecraft, uh, hot plasma, which is again, uh, as you know for sure, due to the uh, drag uh, towards the atmosphere of the spacecraft, uh, we are something like 90 kilometers above the surface. Uh, we are uh, the density of, uh, of the atmosphere is quite very low. I would say quite very low, uh, but uh, the speed is so high. You are so uh, so fast. Uh, that the the drag becomes very high uh, you will see Elon Musk and all the, the SpaceX guys will say will say that uh, some tiles have the, will have detached from the spacecraft we don't know if uh, due to the extreme heat uh, so during the, the flight itself or uh, when splashing down but uh, we can see now that uh, uh, the spacecraft is uh, traveling in the atmosphere we have seen a, a the light movement of the flap of the spacecraft itself trying to control aerodynamically its re-entry we are just now skipping a little forward into the into the video we have seen we are seeing now that we are 53 minutes into flight the speed is uh, is again quite high we are now at 22,000 km per hour it's very high um, the altitude is decreasing very very slightly uh, again SpaceX Starship is uh, something like a space plane so you don't experience an uh, almost vertical descent uh, even though Soyuz and also the other capsule don't have uh, a straight vertical descent uh, uh, neither in, uh, in emergency condition the trajectory is never is never vertical but uh, for sure for space plane uh, it is uh, very gentle towards the uh, towards the ground we know that the the spacecraft will uh, will splash down in the indian ocean with a different uh, uh, with a different view now we see that the the flap is still uh, intact now uh, there is no visible damage we only see the hot plasma traveling around the spacecraft and at an amazing speed of 21 almost 22,000 kilometers per hour again skipping now the the, the video uh, maybe too much 
we we now can no more see clearly what's happening there is a burn through probably in the spacecraft it seems there is a, a detachment of the structure probably is the secondary structure so the the fairing of the spacecraft itself which is detaching as as you may have noticed that there is no trust from the from the engine because it's useless the spacecraft is controlling nominally as expected only by thanks to the aerodynamic forces we have we are now at 12,000 kilometers per hour and 50 kilometers above the ground. Let's keep now a little more. And uh, yeah, now that's the radio back, uh, blackout. And again, at uh, 2,000 uh, kilometers per hour, 26 kilometers above the ground, one hour and three minutes into the flight, uh, Starship is, uh, is still performing nominally as expected. Things are going good. Again, let's now get back into the final phases. Uh, uh, of the of the launch we are seeing now there are there is some visible damage on the flap probably the right flap uh, no the left flap of the spacecraft the uh, attitude is almost parallel to the to the surface so we would say horizontal attitude almost a, a little push down into the atmosphere 50 kilometers of altitude uh, above the above the ocean you can see from uh, the little scheme in the below in the yeah the lower part of the of the display that uh, the starship is pitching up and down trying to to break to break uh, uh, and to uh, diminish its speed but it's still uh, more than 300 kilometers uh, flying through the atmosphere at one kilometers uh, one kilometers above the ground we are for sure in the final phases uh, and uh, as we can see now the damages are not very clear but uh, it has probably splashed down now in the water yes now it is in vertical configuration and it has probably splashed down we know that the splash down was almost nominal and uh, we, we don't know what happened for sure. Okay, now no, now is uh, the official splashdown of the spacecraft with a, with a perfect flipping maneuver, landing vertically into the water and then uh, for sure they are uh, uh, deep water in the uh, far from the coast of the Indian Ocean. So uh, now the, the spacecraft is going deep into the water and uh, the mission was a success but under the booster point of view and the starship point of view people are very happy on the spacex side and also spectators uh, have gone wild into this hour and six minutes and 30 seconds of flight time and uh, starship demonstrated to be uh, very successful uh, into the testing phase and also as said in, a, in another video uh, into the la uh, our latest update uh, Elon Musk said that uh, again still four flights are uh, foreseen for the 2024 uh, the, the main uh, the main obstacle now is uh, the Federal Aviation Administration which could could not give the flight license to SpaceX to perform their intended uh, their intended flights and now uh, before saying goodbye, I just invite you to visit our website, which is spaceinfo.club. So you can access a lot of content for free, a lot of articles, a lot of free content. But also, I strongly invite you to join the club, which again is free. You can just become a member in a few clicks, just giving your email, no name, no surname, no personal data will be uh, raised by us and so you can access the magazine and also all the other exclusive content for the members but being a member again is completely free so I strongly invite you to visit www.spaceinfo.club enjoy the club, let's see you there and uh, in the next video thanks for listening, goodbye